The man, the myth, and the legend, Conor McGregor is basically the backyard king. He's going to go down as someone who will be remembered for generations. After Muhammad Ali, Conor is definitely someone who deserves an award for being so good at trash talking. Few combat athletes have the personality and wit that McGregor possesses. He's well known for throwing quite the zingers in the octagon. So in today's video, we'll be diving into some of his famous quotes. First off, we're not here to take part, we're here to take over. On his way to challenging Diego Brandeo for the UFC featherweight title, McGregor said these wise words when he entered the octagon in July 2014. This was going to be one of those fights that would result in Conor becoming a top contender and establishing his authority as a fighter in the UFC. The fight went down very interestingly. As soon as the bout started, Conor prepared for his famous counter in response to Brandeo's first throw, but Brandeo faked it and tried a head kick instead, throwing Conor off guard with his counter and causing him to be on the ugly end of the kick. When Conor was breaking down and analyzing the fight, he mentioned how this shot really drove him insane. It obviously nicked and he became pissed beyond explanation. This shot made him question himself about coming in too cocky at Brandeo. The bout took place in his country, which put extra pressure on him to do well. At second place, McGregor said, I own this town. Wouldn't go without a mention. Conor McGregor can make any congregation crazy and put people in a complete frenzy. And this is true for people who've been through the worst riots. The way he can work up a crowd needs to be documented in a film. McGregor talked about how he'll fight off every Brazilian out there, from a kid to the women to men. The guy, for real, didn't leave out any person. He talked about how he'd fight them off to get to Jose Aldo's belt. Imagine the resolve needed to fight off an entire nation. I own Rio de Janeiro were his exact words, and this rant ended on a note that he owned the town too. In the weeks before his fight with Jose Aldo, which was scheduled to take place in July of the same year, McGregor made this strange remark about the Brazilians in the first of several press conferences on a worldwide tour. Next up, we have McGregor saying, we're rich, baby. In a press conference titled Go Big in September 2015, attention was paid to the McGregor vs. Aldo bout at UFC 194 in December. And this is when McGregor said these wise words. Apparently, every time he signs a contract to fight off an opponent, he calls his wife to tell her they're rich. Now, that's just wholesome. Fourth on the list, we have Connor getting frisky by saying, cuddle him, look after him. While speaking at the same press conference, McGregor said he would see to it that Aldo made it to the bout. He was prophetic when he predicted that it would end quickly because McGregor did, in fact, KO Aldo in just 13 seconds. Man, the way Connor disses his opponents is just out of this world. He was talking about Aldo here and how he's scared and needs someone to hold him. Besides being good at jargon, Connor is plain hilarious. Next up at number 5, who the F is that guy? Everyone has heard this before. It's basically a meme now, and guess what? Connor is its pioneer. It's been six years since this particular phrase was uttered, which is possibly the most famous quote ever made by the man himself. As one of the most lethal punchers in the featherweight category at the time, and someone who thought he could give McGregor a tough fight, Jeremy Stevens would interrupt a reporter when they were asking a question. And well, we're sure you can now guess how things turned out for him. Him. Following up at number 6, Connor claimed, I run this whole thing. I own New York. Connor proved he was the boss by saying no one had anything over him. It's apparent that he calls his own shots in the game, and no one can stop him from doing so. This is basically the context behind his iconic words. At the same event where these comments were made, McGregor also mentioned that most boxers aspire to be on a similar pedestal to him. How's that for confidence? Up next at number 7, Connor surprised everyone and said, I'd like to take this chance to apologize. Connor doesn't shy away from giving his WWE style promo openings. We all thought he had changed for the better, but then he quickly went back to his original tone and said that he has to apologize to nobody. According to him, Double Champ can do whatever he wants. That's right, Connor. He said this when in a first for the organization, McGregor was wearing two belts at once after defeating Alvarez to capture the lightweight title. Following that, at number 8, Connor dissed Mayweather by yelling, you can't even and read. This one is always going to sting Mayweather because it was just so unexpected. In fact, no one saw this coming. He also called Mayweather a 12-year-old breakdancer. The zingers only get better in this one. The trash talking here was elite, and Connor left Mayweather completely speechless. He had nothing to say back. How do you even come back from something like this? You don't. This is why Connor rules the trash talking league. Lastly, Gods Recognize Gods by Connor. This guy deserves to be in the Hall of Fame just for all all these 
quotes. You can't see anyone else saying something like this. In the most badass manner, Connor told people how he was cool with all gods because gods recognize gods. You can only wonder how Connor came up with this. Honestly, the man is pure genius when it comes to trash talk. You can't become this poetic without having the wit of words. That's all for Connor and his witty trash talk. Now let's talk about the five current UFC fighters who led the new breed of trash talkers. On number five, Israel Adesanya deserves to be mentioned. The devoted trash talker is known as the last style bender. The strange sentences that Izzy uses in his trash talking frequently remind people of Henry Cejudo's King of Cringe Act. Adesanya seemed to really believe that remarks like the frozen comparisons he made in both the pre-fight UFC 276 news conference and the post-fight interview thereafter were clever, in contrast with Sejudo, who purposefully makes his trash talking awkward. His particular brand of accidentally cringeworthy trash talking may pave the way for other fighters to express themselves when trash talking without utilizing prepared phrases as others do. The most unapologetic display from Adesanya, meanwhile, may have been his Twin Towers illusion before Yoel Romero's fight at UFC 248. Following up on number four, we have Kevin Holland. His octagon trash talking has been more important in defining his rise to prominence. Although he is better known by the ring name Trailblazer, Holland's antics in the cage have also earned him the moniker Big Mouth. This is a result of the welterweight's constant trash talking during fights with opponents. The most well-known instance of his shenanigans was probably his surprising technical knockout victory over Ronaldo Jaquer Souza. Holland tried to keep the Brazilian at bay with his guard while Souza was watching him. After a brief exchange of words, Trailblazer struck from the bottom, startling his opponent before quickly getting to his feet to deliver follow-up blows for the sensational knockout victory. Souza had earlier mockingly commended Holland's defensive grappling. Up next, Sean O'Malley made it to the list. He has one of the most distinctive hairstyles on the whole UFC roster and is a curious guy outside the cage. In fact, his hairdo has been utilized to make fun of his rivals. Sugar painted his hair the colors of the Ecuadorian flag in order to insult his opponent, Marlon Chito Vera, an Ecuadorian, before their fight at UFC 252. O'Malley is known for trash-talking potential rivals in videos that he posts to his social media accounts, in addition to his brilliantly dyed hair. While other fighters frequently utilize press conferences, interviews, and tweets to criticize their opponents, Sugar takes advantage of every opportunity to tease potential rivals. Next, we have Colby Covington. Get this, even the UFC appeared uninterested in Covington. The former interim welterweight champion claimed the lack of attention and excitement he attracted nearly led to his dismissal from the company. Following his victory over Maya, Covington made a now-famous video in which he criticized the entire nation of Brazil for its hostile treatment of him. The former interim champion then started a crusade against the whole UFC roster, targeting athletes across all weight classes with his insults. Lastly, let's talk about Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland is the best at using derogatory language. The former welterweight's fighting style and MMA career aren't particularly compelling. He is effective though. Strickland though is a very different animal when he has a microphone. The current middleweight contender frequently exposes his uncensored ideas with the purpose of stirring up controversy, so his kind of trash talk is meant for pure shock value. One of the many instances Strickland has exploited to spark attention was when he purposefully used homophobic slurs to verbally assault Israel Adesanya during the UFC 276 pre-fight news conference. That's a wrap for this video, folks. Let us know what you think of these trash talkers in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this. See you in the next one with the latest updates.